Hello, welcome to lesson 1.12, factoring mixed practice. So we're done learning about factoring. Now it's time for us to actually practice factoring. And I am not going to insult your intellect by telling you what factoring method you gotta choose, okay? You need to know for which situation should I use which method. Now I have this nice flow chart here for you, for your guidance. So please, please do make use of it, okay? Uh, of course, I think I will allow you to use or provide you this uh, for unit one test. However, I will be expecting you to be then, you know, ready. Have you're so familiar with this that you don't even need this by the time we hit midterm. I am going to model how to use this for each of these problems. Step number one in factoring is always checking for the greatest common factor, meaning what do all the terms share in common? So first thing I need to look out for is the numbers, the coefficient and the constant. Right? If you look at them, um, they're both even numbers. Right? And the first term has 2. Right? So the only number that divides 2 nicely is 2. So I'm thinking already in my head, oh wait, this is an even number. So I can divide this by 2. This definitely divides by 2. So 2 is a greatest common factor. Now, the next thing we need to check for is the variable. Now, if I'm look at, looking at the variable, um, unfortunately, the first one has x to the fourth, but the second term does not have an x. So, x is not a greatest common factor. So, I know I just said 2 is my greatest common factor. I'm going to take out 2 from each term. So, if you look, right, taking out the 2, all it means is you're dividing. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay? And then I have, well, x to the 4th, I didn't do nothing to it, okay? And then here, negative 16, so I'm going to copy the sign. 162 divided by 2 is 81. I'm going to stop right there, okay? The next stop is we ask ourselves how many terms are left inside the parentheses after taking out the greatest common factor. So I see that I have 1 and 2, so I have binomial. Following the chart, I have two options, difference of perfect squares or sum or difference of perfect cubes. Now this one is known as SOAP, so don't forget. Okay, it's a quick way to memorize. So what, I, what you have to do is you need to go ahead and check back at the table. And I'm checking out the variables because the variables exponent often gives us the hint. So I don't see x to the fourth here, but I do see x to the fourth here. So that means I probably will have to use a difference of perfect squares. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because it is the difference. And actually, let me check 81. Where is 81 in the chart? Hey, right here. Tells me I need to do difference of perfect squares. So to factor difference of perfect squares, uh, remember that we have to take square root of each term. So I'm going to just do some work on the side. Square root of x to the fourth. Let me just use the chart once again. Square root of x to the fourth. Remember, you just get rid of that exponent of 2. Is x squared. Okay, 81 square root it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Square root of 81 is 9. All right, once we have these two down, let's just go ahead and mix it up. I create, remember GCF always just stays put. I create two sets of parentheses. One of them is going to be plus, the other one minus, and I simply just place each of the terms square root into the corresponding spot. So you see x to the fourth is the first one. So x squared is going to go into the first spot of each binomial. And of course 9 gets placed in the second spot of each binomial. Now scholars, if you go back to the direction, right, it's really important that we read the direction. So it says, using the flowchart above, factor each expression completely. I briefly mentioned this before, but when we factor, we definitely want to factor completely. Meaning, factor until I can't factor anymore. Oh, I wrote it right here even, shaking my head. I don't even read my own notes. 
To factor completely means to factor until you can't factor anymore. Okay? Until you can't anymore. So if you look at what we have left, hmm, your eyes should be drawn to this binomial here. We have a difference, meaning subtraction, of perfect squares. x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. So you have to, you know, kind of get into the habits of seeing, you know, building the eye muscle that, you know, sees the difference of perfect squares. So we actually can break this one down further. I'm just going to go ahead and copy what I had before. But then remember, when we factor difference of perfect squares, we create two parentheses, one of them plus, one of them minus. Sorry, I'm running out of space, but I'm going to do my work in the bottom here. So square root of x squared is x, square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to place my answer x, x, 3, and 3. So thus, my final, final answer for this question is 2, the greatest common factor, x squared plus 9, x plus 3, and x minus 3. That is my final answer. Now you might say, yo, why can't I factor this? But hold on a second. So x squared and 9 both are perfect squares, right? But remember, the only instance in which I can factor for perfect squares is the difference. If you look here, it's positive. It's not a difference. So I cannot factor this binomial. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, once again, I'm going to go ahead and number one, check out for GCF. So when I look at these expressions, first of all, I'm noticing that there is no coefficient for the first term. So that means I probably cannot have a number GCF. Let's check out the variables, x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second. So that means all the terms have at least two x's. So my GCF here is x squared. If I take out x squared from x to the fifth, two of them are out, so I'm left with three x's. I didn't touch the number, so the number stays put. Took out two from four x's, I'm left with two. Three x's, I'm going to copy the numbers first, and then x to the third, I took out two, I have a single x left. On the last term, copy the numbers. But then from x squared, I took out x squared, so there's no more x's left. Let me go back to the flow chart. I took out the GCF. Step two, how many terms? Okay, well, inside the parentheses, I see one, two, three, four. Okay. So that means, not binomial, trinomial, polynomial, four terms. So that means I'm going to group. So grouping is the same thing as just pairing up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just guide my eyes to focus on these two. So oftentimes I realize that the greatest common factor tend to confuse scholars. So scholars, if it helps, just ignore these and just look at these four terms. The greatest common factor of the first pair is x squared. So again, you want to ignore that for now. So if I take out x squared from x to the third, x if I take out x squared from 5x squared, plus 5. Now, let's look at the latter two. Um, I actually do want to uh, share a little trick. I've told you multiple times that the parentheses actually have to be the same, right? Okay, so then, hold on a second. Some number here that I take out, when I multiply by x, I should get negative 25x. I'll repeat it one more time. x times what gives me negative 25x? Negative 25. Okay. So I know I told you to take it out from both of them here again, but we know the parentheses have to match up, right? So that's why we can actually easily find this if we actually work our way backwards. Okay. And guess what? Negative 25 times 5 is equal to negative 125. 
All right, so I am going to go ahead and bring down the GCF here at the end. Okay, so again, this is to eliminate confusion. Okay, so then remember, I bring the outsiders into one set of parentheses. And then I copy one of the repeated parentheses. And of course, I cannot forget the GCF. Now, if you think we can just stop here and say we're done, again, I hope you are detecting a pattern here. Look at this. It's a difference of perfect squares. Okay. So we can once again, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it down, but then this I'm going to break it down into two sets of parentheses, one of them plus, one of them minus, and I am going to go ahead and copy the last one right here. And remember, when we factor difference of perfect squares, we do have to take square root of each term. And you can always use the chart on the page before, page 15. So square root of x squared is x, square root of 25 is 5. So we're going to have 5 and the x's. Okay. So my final answer for this problem is this. Now, if you notice that x plus 5, the binomial is squared. Right? It's getting multiplied by itself twice. So another way to express your final answer is x squared, x plus 5 squared, and x minus 5. Okay? Because this is getting multiplied by itself twice. Okay? But that's unnecessary. I'm just saying that these are the same thing. But it's totally fine if you just write everything out. Let's go on to the next one, example three. Again, step number one is GCF. All right. Now, one tip I really want to share with you when we factor is that when the leading term is negative, GCF that we want to take out should be negative. I repeat it one more time. When the first term is negative, we want to take that negative out in GCF. Now, um, we're going to have to do some guess and check, right? Let's check out the numbers first. 9 is divisible by 3, right? But maybe 48 is divisible by 9. Let me see. 9 times... Uh, no, no, can't do that, okay? But 48 is divisible by 3. You can do this by checking it on your calculator, right? Forty-eight divided by nine, not gonna work. Forty-eight divided by three, hey, it works. All right, so then now that means I do I do need to take out negative three. Uh, let's check out the variables. It's the fifth, it's the fourth, x the third. So that means all the terms have at least x to the third. That's my GCF. So when I take out negative from all the terms, remember all the terms are negative, so that means all the stuff, all the terms inside will be positive because I took that out from all of them. Now all I got to do is divide, right? 9 divided by 3 is 3. From x to the fifth, I took away 3, so I'm left with 2x's. Again, negative has been taken out. 48 divided by 3 is 16. We just figured that out. From x to the fourth, I took out 3x's. x. Once again, it's the same number. I took out that negative, so it's positive. And x third out of x third, no x is left. All right. So again, here we ask ourselves, how many terms do we have inside the parentheses? And here, clearly, one, two, three. We got three terms. So that means we're going to use the AC method. Okay. Now, AC method, scholars. I do want you to annotate, okay? Because sometimes you forget. So if you just kind of build the muscle memory of annotating, okay, you will more likely you are more likely to remember it, and also, you know, it just becomes a second nature. You don't have to think as hard, right? You have to like think, okay? What was the AC method? All right, A, B, and C. I need two numbers that multiply to AC but add up to. 3 times 16, we already said it's 48, and 16 is B, so let's, we're going to have to do some guess and checks, right? 
48. What two numbers multiply to 48? Let's just do, uh, do some guessing checks. So let's just do 48 divided by 4. Okay. 4 and 12. Oh, hey, bingo. If I have 4 and 12, if I multiply them, I get 48. If I add them, I do get 16. It's perfect. So now, once I have that, okay, once I have that number combination, this is where like people I see forget what to do. We rewrite the middle term, okay, using the number combination. All right, we ready? I'm going to go ahead and keep the color the same, so I'm just going to bring everything down. But then I'm going to rewrite, remember, it's going to be plus 4, and then I'm going to copy the variable of the middle term. Okay. And the reason why we do that really is, scholars, just forget about everything and look here. 4x plus 12x. 4 plus 12 is 16, right? And these are like terms. So all I did was I didn't change anything about this polynomial. I just broke it down into two different pieces. So that way, we can pair up and finish factoring. So again, if it's confusing, just make yourself look at only these two terms. 3 and 4, they really do not have common factor. However, they both have x. So I'm going to take out x for both terms. All right, let's look at the latter two. Both are, actually, let's work our way backwards, right? So I know inside the parentheses should be 3x plus 4. So then now I'm thinking to myself, okay, 3x times what gives me 12x? Got the x's. 3 times what gives me 12? 4. Positive 4. Now the GCF will always just be there, hanging, chilling, having a good time. All right, to finish this up, we should bring the outsiders into one set of parentheses. We copy one of the repeated parentheses. And lastly, we bring down the GCF. So here is our final answer. Now, yes, we do have to check inside, but I'm looking at it. None of them are perfect squares. I don't see no difference. Okay, so that's it. There's nothing else to break down. Okay. All right, so one last thing I want to add to our notes here is the fact that after we think we are done, right? Look here. After we thought we were done. After we thought we were done, we always have to check for difference of perfect squares. Okay, so we're going to add one more thing on our notes. When we think we're done, check for difference of perfect squares.